Hey, sister friends, it's Terry from Sisterhood of the Traveling Brush. Thanks for joining me. Today, we're gonna talk about paintbrushes. This is in no way or any means a whole exhausted list of brushes. There's millions more in the world than these. These are my favorites that I use all the time. And I'm just gonna show you a little bit of the difference in them, describe them a little bit, tell you what I use them for. And we're not gonna go over like cleaning or storage or any of that very much in here. We'll do that on a different video. But today I just wanna talk about the different brushes and sort of when you use each one. I'm gonna start with the furniture painting brushes and those can be both um, synthetic or synthetic or natural bristle. And I'll just hold these both up for a second to see. This is a natural bristle brush from Paint Pixie. And it is a, one of my very favorite brushes. This was called a number 12. And it holds a massive amount of paint. When you're getting ready to paint with say DIY paint or another chalky style paint, and you're going for more of a boho or a grungy look and you want to get, and it's a big piece of furniture to where you, you know, want to go all the way across the whole piece, but brush strokes don't matter as much to you. That's, or when you want brush strokes, that's when you're more likely to be happy with a natural bristle brush. I'm not educated enough to know what these come from. I think they come from like, animal tails or something <laughs> pigs pigs or, or broomsticks I, i'm not sure but i know that it's natural stuff it's not man-made and they're natural this is a very good one and it is important in a lot of instances to have really good tools and these these are the tools of the trade so we we'll use some crappy ones sometimes and i'll go over that but most of the time you're going to want a good brush unless you're doing something really rough and, and we'll go over that too. But that's sort of the difference in all the different brushes, the artist brushes and the furniture brushes. The main difference is going to be what the bristles are made out of. And the synthetic brushes like this one, this is my very favorite brush of all the brushes. This one is called the Mini Angle by Dixie Bell and see how it has a little bit of an angle there on the end rather than straight like this one. This is another favorite, uh, it's just called the Mini. But with this one, these particular brushes with this little short handle, the majority of the weight is right here. This is called the Ferrule. So the majority of the weight of this brush is in the ferrule area, which is right where my hand is. And then the wooden handle and the synthetic bristles must weigh about the same because it balances out very well. And I don't know if y'all know that I broke my wrist. I, I shattered it actually. And, and I got about 70% use back. So I get fatigued in the wrist very easily, especially whenever it's a brush that's off balance a little bit, that's really heavy on the bristle side or really, and has a light handle or really heavy or long handled on the other end. Those take a little more finesse in the finagling and they wear me out. So I love this brush and I love the angle particularly because when you're going along, you're only gonna have your paint up about a third of the way because if you get too much paint under your ferrule here, it's gonna eventually cause the bristles to come loose. It's gonna stiffen up in there. It's gonna not be your favorite anymore. So you, and, and it'll rust through there if you soak it in water too long and all those things. The paint usually only goes up about a third of the way. You may end up with it half the way, but you never like dip your brush all the way down into the paint. So you got your paint about here, but when you have this, uh, natural i mean this angle you can glide along the edge of a dresser top or a table top and you can stay right on that edge the whole time and that one load of the paint is going to bring you all the all the way through and you can get those angles those corners those edges and all of that really good with the angle brush i love the mini for the same reason as far as the weight of it and how it sits in my wrist without giving me wrist fatigue and i use this more often if i'm doing the whole we'll use this again the whole body of the piece this is real easy for doing a, a cabinet door which i guess you would be going this way and it's easy to start those bristles 
and go all the way down with it. And when you're using the synthetic brushes, they also hold a lot of paint if you get a good quality one. If you go buy one at the Dollar Tree, well, you got what you paid for. I mean, I've used them. Sometimes you want to use that stuff, but not whenever you're painting a piece of furniture, especially if it's an heirloom piece you're going to keep or you're making it for somebody you love or you're making it for sale and you want it to look really good. That's when you need the good tools. On average, a good brush is going to cost about $30, a little bit less. A little bit more but on average right around there but that's the difference in say these two minis is the angle for what you're going to do for going straight lines along edges and applying paint with it and this one is those are great for for my hand whenever you're doing silk paint or an all-in-one paint or when you're doing a top coat like a satin top coat or whatever that you want these natural bristles so that it doesn't leave the brush strokes on there. That's important when you're choosing which type, whether to use a natural bristle or whether to use a uh, synthetic. Some of the other brushes, this is called a flat. And if you can imagine that, it's flat. It's just a flat brush here. This is a flat medium and this is a flat large. These are both Dixie Bell synthetic brushes. And I love both of these. I use this one a lot. It's not weighted as well for my hand as the mini, but it still is, and I end up holding it way down here on the ferrule. When I choose a brush as big as this one compared to the mini, I'm, I'm doing a big piece of furniture. I'm doing the front of a buffet. I'm doing the uh, an armoire or something really huge where I want, I don't want to be dipping and painting and dipping and painting. I really want the brush to hold a lot of paint and to put, you know, not too many brush strokes and to really get it on there straight and do a good job. Well, that's when I would choose synthetic because I don't want the brush strokes and I would choose a larger, like the flat large, um, is to get more paint on an area. If you were, if I'm doing a chair that has like flat spindles in back or something like that, that's when I would choose the a flat again, but I would choose a smaller one because it helps me to get in and out of those little intricate areas. And again, this one is synthetic. There's also round, I'm gonna show you the round on a natural bristle. This is a wax brush and we'll go over that later. I just want you to see this is round, so when you're working with a brush like this, that's a round brush, or an oval. See how this one is an oval shape? I use, you can tell by the wear and tear on this. I use this a lot too. This goes over a lot of surface area as well, but whenever, and I use this brush mostly if I'm doing a piece that has multiple colors on it, or so it has maybe a larger surface area too large to use something small like this, which is an artist brush, but not large enough to need something like this. So a lot of times I'll do pieces, especially with the boho look and things like that, that maybe have a little bit of teal here and there. And then maybe they'll have a little purple over here and maybe a little yellow up here and a little pink down here. That's whenever, that's when I choose the round brushes. They hold a massive amount of paint. It's not real wide. It's not much wider if it is at all than the the flat medium but it does hold a lot of paint because of, of the shape and a, a lot of the chalk paint top companies started out and came out and recommended in the beginning the oval type brushes and that's this is what a lot of people use so we'll move from those are you know the best things on on synthetics and also let me show you this this particular one and these come in uh synthetic or natural bristle these are really kind of silky like a blending brush say if you used your oval and you put a little teal here and a little purple there and some yellow there then you're wanting to kind of blend those together and and mist it with just a tad of water and pull those colors through so that it doesn't look splotchy, that's when you would use a blending brush like this one. And it's great to be right in your hand and you can work on the surface. You can also, you know, use this for paint to dab in and around surfaces. But for the most part, most of the time, they're used for blending. Say if you had a dark blue here and a white here and you wanted a medium blue in the middle, you could uh, use one of your brushes 
paint those two colors on, mist, and then come back with your blending brush and blend those together to get that sort of ombre effect. You can, of course, do that with a lot of brushes if, if you're talented enough and things like that. It is a pretty easy process, but this thing makes it a whole lot easier. This one's called the Scarlet from Dixie Belle. Paint Pixie makes one, a natural bristle one. They may make a synthetic one too, but they, they make, it's called the Dusty. And the Dusty is maybe a little bit smaller than this one. Then there's a little Dusty, which is a, even a little bit smaller. And that one fits perfectly down into like an eight ounce small container of paint to where if you're wanting to maybe dip this corner of it in your blue paint, dip this corner of it in your white paint, and then go to blend and you can do that too and these brushes are perfect for that so that can be synthetic or natural bristle with that shape so now i want to talk about the natural bristle brushes real quick and the benefit of those is they hold massive amounts of paint i used this paint pixie number 12 as my brush of choice for probably five years and, and I still love it, and I still, this one is a, a new one that the handle got broke whenever I mailed it to somebody who bought it off of Etsy, so I had to um, send them a new one, and they sent this one back, and, and I kept it to use for myself. But anyways, the, these hold massive amounts of paint as well, and this would be what I would do a, the top of a buffet or the front of a drawer or whatever with if I was wanting to have a little more of a, of a distressed look, a lot of times people are wanting, the, you know, still the farmhouse look and things like that, then your natural bristle, natural bristle brushes are king or queen. These are queen, man, queen of the castle. They hold a lot of paint and it looks fantastic whenever you're doing a distressed piece and to use a natural bristle brush. This one, uh, they also have, I think this is probably gonna be the number eight. That's my second favorite of these. And this one is well-worn, but see the difference in size in those? This is where you would do the smaller drawers, the fronts around the, uh, the edges and the details, but there's also smaller ones. I just didn't get out, you know, every brush that I own here. But the same instance, I would use this when I was gonna distress, when I wanted to have, uh, brush strokes show and, and that kind of thing. Definitely the natural bristle. And, and these also are weighted very well. It's pretty lightweight brush for as much paint as it'll hold. And so you just think of it as I want the larger brush when I'm doing a larger surface, smaller brush when I'm doing a smaller surface. And this one, like I said, this one's a number 12. This is a number eight. It comes in a number four and a number two. And those I use for doing picture frames and smaller areas. And this one is called a French tip. This one's about worn out, but when it has the little pointy tip here, that's called a French tip. I don't know if it has to do with French kissing, but <laughs> that's what it reminds me of to remember what it does. And this is one, I don't know if you'll be able to tell the difference here when I open this up. This is like a scrapbooking thing. This is what you would use to get good deep down in those crevices and around the details. If you added a piece of wood molding or something like that, where you wanted to get in there and get your dark color deep down in there so that you could age it and things like that, that's when you want the pointed tip. And to show you a little bit of the difference, this is a flat tip. See the difference there? These are actually both the same size brush. These are both paint pixies. This one is uh, 25C. That means it's the size of a quarter. And this one is the uh, French tip. And other companies make this. Dixie Bell makes one of these. Uh, Paint Pixie makes a little Frenchie, a smaller one for if you're doing smaller details. And the same thing, I, I don't know if they still make these, but these came in a... 25C, a 5C, and a 1C, nickel size, penny size, quarter size. And these are for when you want, are doing a flat surface. I use these for stenciling. So, you know, you never want to brush back and forth when you're stenciling because it'll get under your stencil and make you mad. <laughs> but if you have your stencil here, get yourself some paint, offload some of it, and then dab it, dab it, dab it. And that flat surface is what saves you. These come in, you know, you can buy them at Hobby Lobby or wherever too, probably Walmart. I don't, haven't been there in a couple of years. But, so you're always looking for the flat surface. 
and you've probably seen me before when I can't find my flat one, take a chip brush and cut it off completely flat and stiff so it'll be stiff like this and not have a bunch of bendy movement and stencil with that. So as long as it's flat on the end, you can do that, but this is gonna cover a lot more surface and if you're doing a, a very large detailed stencil on a piece of furniture, you're not wanting to just be, you know, using something like this and dab, 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 dab and be there all day long. You wanna use something like this and move on to the next thing because you wanna see how pretty your piece is gonna be. <laughs> so that's when you use a flat brush and it doesn't, I use, my flat brushes are all synthetic. I think they're stiffer, they're a little tougher and, and, and they just are. So that usually you'll want a little bit of texture in your uh, stencil anyway. So they're perfect for that. So that's the flat brushes. These are, we talked about this earlier, that this is a round brush, but this particular brush, very stiff, lots and lots of bristles in there. This is a paint pixie that made in Italy. Here's my dark one. Lots of companies make these too, and you can use these for, you know, other things besides wax. Some people apply their paint with these. That's, that's, not what I do, so I can't tell you about that, but I'm not saying they're wrong. They, they may be the rightest people there ever were, but here's what I do with them. They're wax brushes, and I, I actually have three that I use all the time, and I never wash them. I don't want to get water in here where I've got wax. That's just a depth of color in there, but I, I, I dip them in my wax, I wax stuff with them. Then I usually have a rag right here, pull them this way to get the bristles relatively back in order. And then I just put them up. You saw probably that this one just came out of a plastic bag. And this one is the one I use on dark wax. The reason I, I use three is I have one for clear wax, one for dark and black wax, and I have one for medium color. Sometimes I make tint to wax teal or blue or, or you know, pink, you can tend to wax any color you want to, but sort of the lighter colors that aren't so dark as this, but darker than this, then I have a third brush for that, and I save them. But whenever I'm done, I would use my rag or drop cloth or whatever, get off that excess colored wax on there, and you can do that, do that, do that, until there's, you know, not really much of anything showing. Pull the bristles back together and put it aside to use again. These are especially good for when you're doing chalk top painting like a DIY or Dixie Belle or Junk Monkey or whatever brand you use because a lot of times you've done that with a natural bristle brush so that it can look distressed later and it's gonna have those brush lines and those details and swirls and things in it that make it look old and chips and sanded off areas, whatever you do on there. When you come in with something like this, it's gonna get it's flat, just like you, just like the one that we were using for stenciling. And it's gonna get in everything, and it's just smooth and works it in there, and it, it's fantastic for that. I have an occasionally used a rag. Sometimes I, you know, use whatever I have available. I do believe I'm guilty of this being teal wax on the end of here that I was wanting to get way up in the corner of a drawer. But th these are perfect for that. And like I said, other companies make them. These are Paint Pixies, they're my favorites. And they're the ones that I use most often for waxing. Like I said, you can wax with a rag, you can do however you want. Most of the time, I'm gonna put my wax on with this. Let me stop one more time on this one. I'm gonna put my clear wax on first, all over the whole piece to seal it, or at least put a, clear coat sealer on there first with a synthetic brush. And when that dries, you, if it's wax, you can buff that out a little bit. Then you come back with your dark wax or your detail wax of whatever color you're gonna use. And you put that on the areas where you want, you know, those details to come out. And then let that dry a few minutes and then you can come back and buff that with a rag. If you were to just go straight on with this without protecting it first and sealing that ultra grabby paint that's in the chalk and the minerals that go in all that, this black is gonna get all over the place. Your piece is just gonna look dirty. And I don't think you're gonna be as happy with it unless you're wanting to, you know, deepen, darken up the whole piece. If that was to happen and you forget and you're so excited to put your dark wax on, come back with the clear wax on your, with your clear wax brush, go over the areas where you didn't want that dark wax and it will erase it. It's, it's like a freaking 
paint lady saving miracle how that works and then you can just buff that back off and it's beautiful and it's only where you want it so there's always a way to save the day when it comes to paint stuff okay so we talked about natural bristle brushes we talked about synthetic brushes let me go to this real quick this is El Cheapo Depot, about as low on the totem pole of a brush as you can get, and I use a bunch of them. These, are, This is called a chip brush. When you hear people say chip brush, this is what they're talking about. And I don't know why it's named that, but you can get higher quality and lower quality chip brushes. Um, Dixie Bell makes one that's called a premium chip brush, and it's like the old school paint brush, like you would buy at Lowe's or whatever, and you can use it multiple times. It's not like a chip brush, it's fuller down here and thicker. I don't have one sitting here to show you, but so you can get like a premium chip brush too for like six bucks if you don't have 30 bucks to spend yet you still get the best that you can afford there but it's still a chip brush at the end of the day and see how uneven and thin the ends are here and this one's used so um these are meant to be disposable and most of us who are furniture saving fanatics don't throw away much of anything because if this one gets too stiff here on the ends and something didn't wash off good i'll cut it off short and then and, and then it'll be stiff and i'll use it for a stencil brush and lord help me whenever they get so stiff and i forget paint on them and they look terrible and the whole thing's a blue blob of a mess i save it and think i'm going to paint a little face on it and hang it on my christmas tree but they're meant to be thrown away what I, I i don't use these and i would never ever recommend using these to paint a piece of furniture to get your actual paint on there unless you're trying to do a shabby chic piece if you're wanting it to to look shabby you're wanting to see some of the brownie frowny furniture under it you know you're going to heavy heavily distress it later girl save yourself some paint and have at it with one of these this one is a three inch. I usually use a two inch. It's a little bit small, about that size. But by all means do that. That's just not the style of painting that, that I do. So that's very, very seldom something I would do. But I use the heck out of these and I buy them by the case at Harbor Freight. I wanna think this size probably has, I don't know, 12 in a box for $8 or something. And that's absolutely making that up. But that's what I think it is. I think I get the two inch come 24 to a box and uh, then I get a one inch one too and I don't have that here to show you but you know it would only be one inch wide and those I use whenever I'm really fixing to be rough on my brush I'm not wanting to be too rough on something that I paid $30 for and I'm wanting to look beautiful for you know make beautiful surface fits forever but if i'm wanting to dig down in this paint and i'm wanting to smear it and i'm wanting to put a patina on there and i'm bobbing it this way and that way and cramming it up in crevices and getting the details and just i mean getting getting with it this is what i'm going to use and then i'm going to pretend i would throw it away at the end but they cost you you know 50 cents so, and these actually, I, I made up a bunch to do for a, a make and take. If you have a business, you can get these for really cheap and then get these little detailed design looking things and glue them on there. And you can do a make and take at, uh, you know, your open house or at a party sometime or whatever. If you, if you have people coming over to try your paints, stick some kind of little design on there and let them paint the handle and they get to take it home with them, cost you less than a dollar and they're thrilled. So. We use them a lot for that too, but these I use whenever I'm gonna be rough and sometimes that happens. And this is definitely not gonna be an exhaustive uh, list of artist brushes, but that's what we're going with. These are furniture brushes, natural bristle, synthetic bristle. These are called artist brushes. So that's the difference in, in your tiny ones. I use a lot of, and they come in higher and lower quality too. This is a low quality one. I get these in those um, like 25 packs from Michaels or wherever. And this is called, this is about a one inch flat. I go through so many of these. I, I use them in canvas painting. I use them in detail work on furniture and stuff like that. And you can get that good flat straight edge with this and come right along with it if you're wanting it to be straight like that this is great for doing stripes and doing small details and doing 
rounded spindles and things like that you can these are great for that not just for canvas work but i use them on uh, canvases for backgrounds and when you're trying to learn to be looser with your painting you hold it down here on this far end and i mean i've painted portraits with this kind of brush before trying to be looser and not so stiff and all up in there so the flat is when you want some good straight lines. The one inch is a good one to have. I have it here and this is probably a half inch. This one is the turquoise iris one. This is uh, from Paint Pixie, but I sell the Paint Pixie and the Dixie Belle. So if you want any of these brushes or you have questions about any of these brushes, just feel free to ask. I will be happy to help. But same thing as uh, these have wood handles. They've been painted, the paint does come off if, uh, well look, this is <laughs> this is a turquoise iris too. I thought it was blue, but it's not. That's just blue paint I got on it. Um, they have a wood handle and it's usually got uh, like a top coat on it, like a clear coat on it. This once again is called the ferrule, the metal part. And inside the ferrule is, I guess they fill that whole thing up with uh, glue and they put all these bristles in there real tight and they crimp it down. And that's how you're supposed to have a, you know, a good long-term brush, depending on how abusive you are to it. With my cheaper ones, I'm abusive. With my better ones, I try not to be. This is a good size for getting stuff done. If you have a little more detail, same, and, but you still want flat lines and things like that, they, it comes in a three-quarter inch, a quarter inch, a one inch, all those, all those different things. Here is a tiny one. This is a quarter inch. This is one of the cheap ones. See, and if. If you're wanting to really, you know, work around some eyebrows and some eyes and all those kind of things, this is good for that. And this is from one of the cheap sets. And there's nothing wrong with that, especially if you're gonna do paint parties and things like that. You're not wanting to use, you know, have kids or whoever using your really good brushes. So it's, it's smart to have those. This, these, I guess, I'll hold two of them up and see if I can do it this way. These are called liner brushes. And liner brushes have really long, skinny bristles. When you get them wet, you can twist them until they're flat, and I probably should take better care of these. They're this, my favorites. These are in my Amazon store if you're looking. This is an El Cheapo. I use them both. Whenever I know I want to put some fine detail into a piece, whether it be a pinstripe on a piece of furniture or whether it be working on somebody's eyelashes on a, a portrait or little dots in the center of a rose uh, or whatever you want to do, that's when your liner brushes because you can generally you will put some paint on there. I'm going to dip that in some water so you can see. Now I've twisted that skinny. Uh, you can, if you're wanting to write a name, so we would do a T for Terry, you're gonna thin out the paint real thin with water, then dip this brush in it, then twist this brush to get a good point on your palette. And then you, this is what you would use to write your name or words or any other hair, loose hairs that are flowing in the wind and all those kind of things. That's when you use your liner brush. Um, these are just the main ones in just random sizes. If you leave your brush in water too long, this is what's gonna happen. This is gonna swell up, then it's gonna shrink when it dries, and then it's gonna come off of, you know, your ferrule's gonna come off. I still save them, I still use them. I cram it in there. You can put some glue on it if you want to, because sometimes those things happen. But this is called a round. It's, it's just, it's sort of like that liner brush, but bigger, a little, a little more round. And this is what you would do the same thing as say if you were working on an ear on a portrait or you were working on a daisy. This is a perfect size for doing a flower like a daisy or something like that. Would definitely use the round brush and these come in all kinds of different sizes. And one more thing on like the length of the handle. See the difference in this one? I have rounds made by the same company in this, but your long handled ones are for when you're standing up to paint and your short handled ones are for when you're sitting down at your easel to paint. So anytime you can use your longer one, that gets you farther away from your surface if you're down here on the tip 
and your painting's gonna be looser. This would make some great hair, but you could, you know, go ahead and plot in somebody's t-shirt or whatever, or huge flowers, something like an iris or something like that. You could do those around with a, with a longer handled one and from a distance so that it's not too tight. So your round is good for like a little rounded shapes where we get the flat shapes with the flat brush. We get more of the rounded edges with the round brush, but there's two more. There's the angle, just like we talked, well, there's probably lots more than two more, but we're gonna talk about two more. This is an angle, just like we had the mini angle for paint and furniture. There's angles in your artist brushes. And same thing, these come in every size from the, I'm gonna wet that, so, see, there, you know I've used these brushes, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> do do as I'm, as I'm saying, not as I'm doing. But th the same thing, if you, especially with the smaller angle, sometimes you may think, oh, I want a liner. It's gonna take you forever to use a liner brush to outline something all the way around. You would use a smaller angled brush when you wanna draw a straight line. So say you were wanting to, what do you call that? Like outline around something. Generally, you're gonna get that straightest line using your angle brush. They come in all the different sizes. This is probably a one inch, but they come in a three quarter inch. They come in a half inch. They come in a quarter inch. They come in these the teeny tiny ones like this. And I use every single one of them for getting those lines. If you were to use this flat to outline something, it's gonna be as wide as that, or it's gonna take you forever trying to stay on the, on the edge. But when you're lining it out, using the tip of your angle, it's just going to put it in there and it's fantastic for that. I should have had a smaller one for this to show you this next thing, but, but I don't. And this is one of my favorites and I've used this brush for probably at least 10 years. Uh, and it's loose in there because, you know, I leave them soaking sometimes. These are my big water buckets and sometimes I'm tired at the end of the day, just like there's a brush in there right now. That's a little flat, a little quarter inch flat and I, I forget, so it, it's okay to be human. Just as soon as you can get it, try to dry it. But anyways, this is uh, when it has, when it looks like a flat, it's long and, and flat, but it's rounded at the top instead of straight. See how we have straight across, angled, and then you have the rounded one. This is called a filbert. And your filbert is fantastic for, same thing like we talked about with daisies earlier. What's a, like a pansy or something that has a, a, a wider petal? Get your paint on there and you can hold it like this if you want to and get that petal on there. And it's perfect. It's also good for, say you're wanting, trying to hold a little farther down here, trying to do a round a rounded something like the round shape of somebody's head and you're just trying to get it on there you know you're going to fill in the flesh tones on their face in a minute or whatever then this is perfect for that because you're going to get a little bit more of ease in getting the rounded edges in there because if you used your angle or you used your flat brush to go around and get that face you can get it but it's still going to have it's going to have those sharper edges on it and you really want those to be softer so that's when you would use your filbert so that's all of the brushes that I got out today there's like I said there's millions more in every size of everything I said but I hope that you have you know more knowledge than you did if you're new about when to choose your synthetic or, or when to choose your natural bristle and when to use your chip brush and flats and points and angles and rounds and ovals and all the things definitely this little blender i hope that that was beneficial for you if you have any questions about brushes just let me know and i'll do my best to answer and help i appreciate y'all being here makes my heart feel good make sure and give me a, a heart or a share or a comment or something because that is how it helps my small business grow thanks bye